guys. So I am so excited for this video because this makeup look turned out so good. I'm so happy with it. It's exactly what I was going for. I really wanted to try and get something that was very wintry, fallish inspired up on the channel before it got past Christmas and all that stuff because I want to do a lot of holiday tutorials coming up, a lot of things to get us in the festive mood. So I did come up with this look. I did use the new, new for me because I am new to this bandwagon and oh my gosh. I am obsessed with this palette. This is my first time using it and everything swatched so beautiful. All the matte shadows, all the shimmery shadows, everything in this palette was so gorgeous. I'm so happy that I finally got my hands on it. For a while there, I know it was so difficult. Everyone was raving about this palette. It was so hard to get your hands on the palette itself. So I did order it finally and I'm so happy that I did. So I'll definitely want to be doing a lot more looks with this palette. I love myself a good warm smoky eye and I wanted to do something that was very daytime appropriate very wearable I really like a good smoky eye with no liner I love that look don't forget to leave a comment down below and let me know what else you guys are looking to see I am definitely going to be continuing on my filming schedule and keeping myself going and uploading videos regularly and I'm so excited to be doing it again and I want to know what you guys want to see. I want to provide you with the videos that you want to see. So just let me know in the comments down below and I'll definitely do them for you. Don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up on this video. And if you guys want to see how I got this look, then just keep watching. So first we're going to go in by priming our eyelids to get them prepped for the eyeshadow later. I'm using my Tarte Shape Tape Concealer, but you can use any concealer that you feel comfortable with. I'm just using this to completely cancel out any redness or any of those veins that are on your eyelids. I want a very clean canvas to work with. So then for our eyes, since we're going to do a little bit more of a dramatic eye, I want to start out with them rather than the face. I'm going to go in with the Morphe 350 palette. I'm going to be using the cream shade and setting the entire eye. For our first transition shade, we're going to be going in with the orange color from the palette. I'm using a super light hand with this. I'm going to really blow it out and smoke it out. Everything is going to be super blended in this look. So I'm going in with windshield wiper motions first and then going in with circular motions after that to further blend it out. Don't worry about being too precise with it. You can kind of be a little messy because we're going to go in with foundation and concealer later. That will clean up that whole outer edge. For our next transition shade, I'm going to be using the more muted, warmer orange in the palette. This is going to give a little bit more depth, depth to the crease. So I'm going to use the same circular and windshield wiper motions to further blend everything out. I am going to be a little bit more precise with this just because it's our next shade. So you don't want to take it as far out as you did with the first one. But you can still be a little bit more messy with it. You don't have to be super, super precise. Then I'm just going to go back in with that first brush. I'm not putting any more product on it. I'm just going to go through the entire crease and really blend everything out. Now using a pencil brush, I'm going to further define the crease. I'm going to use the shade below that, which is a darker shade, and put this straight into the crease. And using a pencil brush gives you more of a precise line. So with this, we are going to be a little bit cleaner than we were with the other two shades. I'm just going to put it into the crease and then slowly work it down into the outer V of the eye. 
This is gonna add a lot of dimension and it's really gonna bring the eye upwards. With this look, you definitely have to keep adding pigment and then blending it out. I don't like going in with too much pigment just to start off with because you have less control that way. So I like to just continue to add pigment and then further blend it out after that. I'm gonna go back in with the first shade that we use and a big blending brush and just apply this back into the crease and make sure there are no harsh lines. It's just gonna further blend everything out. Then going in with the bottom shade on the palette, this is what we're gonna put all over the lid. I am not going to put this on the outer third of the eye where we had put that depth there. I wanna keep the shimmer away from that. So this is really gonna go from the inner corner until you meet that shade that we put on the outer edge. Then just going back in with that pencil brush and cleaning up the crease where any of the shimmer could have gotten into it because we really want to keep the crease matte. Because of making sure that the crease was very blended out, you do lose a little bit of the intensity on the lid. So I'm just going back in with that same shade and packing it to the center of the lid to make sure that the eyes really pop. Now using the Makeup Forever Step 1 Smoothing Primer, I'm going to apply this to the T-zone of the face and around my forehead, anywhere that you may have a little bit of texture that you want to smooth out. Then going in with the LA Girl Concealer in the shade Green, this is going to correct any redness that I have. So if you guys want to have a further in-depth video of color correcting, let me know and I'll definitely do that for you. Then I'm just going to use my Beauty Blender to blend it all out. Then going in with the foundation, I'm going to be using the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow Foundation in the shade 201. I did realize after blending this out that this shade is a little too light for me right now, but it'll all come together once we apply bronzer and everything like that at the end. So don't worry about that. It's always better to have a shade lighter than a shade darker. It's easier to blend in and make it seamless with the rest of the skin. As you can see, I take it and I blend it down onto the neck. That's another tip to use, making sure that you take it all the way down. You don't ever wanna have those lines underneath of your face and it helps blend the color in. Now using my Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector, this is another one of the color correcting products that I like to use. So definitely don't forget to let me know if you guys wanna see a video on this, but I'm just applying this to the inner third of the eye just like we did in the last video. This is gonna brighten everything up and correct any darkness that we have under the eye. Then going in with my LA Girl Concealer in the shade Porcelain, this is a great, great drugstore concealer. It, you would never understand how this concealer is so good for the price. It is crazy. It gives you just enough coverage. It is not cakey. It doesn't crease underneath the eyes throughout the day. It's a great, great drugstore concealer.
Now I'm going in with a concealer brush. I'm going to take any of the excess concealer from underneath the eyes and really sharpen out that wing. This is what I was talking about earlier about that we would go back in and clean everything up. This is when you can clean up any mistakes that you may have had or any of the excess eyeshadow that isn't needed. I'm gonna go back in and make sure that there was no creasing underneath the eyes and then I'm gonna go in with my RCMA no color powder I'm using the beauty blender to set underneath the eyes this is a great baking technique this will make sure that everything stays in place and there won't be any creasing and I'm gonna set the center of the face with it as well I am a huge fan of this powder it is super inexpensive and it does exactly what you want it to do then I'm gonna set my eyebrows which I did off camera today with my Anastasia clear brow gel you guys know this is my favorite brow gel out there right now and then I'm gonna go in and wipe away all the excess powder that we have under the eyes and throughout the center of the face Now to bronze the skin, I'm going to be using the Chocolate Soleil Bronzer from Too Faced. I was not a huge fan of this today, and it's weird because this used to be one of my favorite bronzers, but I think because of using the Makeup Forever Pro Bronze Fusion, I am not a huge fan of this. I feel like it looks a little chunky. It doesn't blend out as much as I thought it did. It has been a while since I used it, so maybe the product's going bad. I'm not 100% sure. But I am going to go in with my Makeup Forever Pro Bronze just to try and blend everything out and make it a little bit more seamless. As you can see, it's a little blotchy looking. But if you ever have that problem with any product on the face, the best thing to do is to go in with a duo fiber brush is what you're going to see me do just in a minute. What this will do is blend everything out seamlessly. It really soaks it into the skin and you can watch it. All of the lines kind of just disappear. It's a great great technique to use especially when you have a product that doesn't do exactly what you want it to do and then for blush today i'm going to be using apricot in the middle by wet n wild it's a great product it's super inexpensive the color is perfect for this look it's just a very warm apricot blush For highlight today, I'm going to mix Champagne Pop and Pearl from Becca Cosmetics. Champagne Pop is a collab with Jaclyn Hill as well, and the palette I'm using is her holiday collection. This was a limited edition palette, but you can still get both of the highlighters sold separately. I am going to apply this to the center of the face and to the cheekbones, anywhere that I want light to reflect off of. I love putting it on top of my eyebrows as well. Then I'm going to go in with Laura Geller Incredible Eyeliner in the shade Brown Eyed Girl. I'm going to put this on the lower waterline and on the lash line on top. This is going to give a lot more length to the eyelashes and it's going to give depth underneath of the eye. Then I'm going to go in with the same shades that I used on the eyelids. But to set the waterline first, I'm going to use a dark brown. What setting it will do is to keep the eyeliner from going anywhere all day long. So after I set that, I'm going to go in with each shade that we used in the crease and blend it out and really smoke out that lower lash line. Now I'm going to coat my lashes with just a layer of mascara. I'm using the L'Oreal Voluminous Million Lashes Mascara. You can use whatever is your favorite mascara, but I do still have my eyelash extension extensions. So this is just the mascara that I had grabbed. I just wanted to coat them and make sure that they were super black. Then I'm going to go in with the second shade in the palette next to the cream shade that we use to set the eyelids. This is what I'm going to use to highlight the inner corners and the brow bone.
For lips today, I am going to be using Kylie Cosmetics Lip Kit in the shade Exposed. So I am going to overline my lips just a little bit. I really want my lips to look super plump with this look. I'm going to start to fill everything in after we're done lining them, and then I'll go in with the actual liquid lipstick and coat the lips with that as well. And this finishes up the look. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.